Hey everyone, what's up? Lane Cooper here. What can we do to fix America? A lot of people think the only answer is to elect another leader into office. But every leader we elect does the same thing. I want you guys to look at these videos that I have prepared for you. They're from Iceland. What the people in Iceland did was arrest the top three bankers in their country along with other corrupt leaders. As a result, their economy is booming. It is surpassing America, China, and the rest of the countries in the world. It no longer wants to be a part of the European Union. They now want to be a sovereign nation. It is very, very powerful what they did. And one man stood up and did the right thing. That's what we need to do here in America. We need to do this. Somebody, whether it's you or somebody else or even me, to stand up and to take charge and arrest these corrupt leaders and bankers to fix our economy and our country. We have the power as the people. I don't know what we can do, but we need to unite enough people and police officers and go in and arrest these people. If we can do that, just maybe, there might be a chance to fix this country. Anyway, you guys, thank you for watching this. Here's the videos. And God help us all would have been a bigger debacle it would have been the government taking over the government doesn't know what it's doing and uh, we, we just we needed their expertise no we had to we had to give all of the money to the banks and almost none of it to the homeowners why because it would eventually help the middle class now did it did it trickle down to us no not really uh, the banks mainly kept it and that's why we're still in a rut we haven't really recovered after all these years but they, we were told we had no other choice. But that's interesting because it turns out there is another choice, and Iceland decided to pursue it. Back in 2008, they also had an epic collapse, and in fact, their banks defaulted on $85 billion. And especially for the size of Iceland, that is gigantic. So they had an enormous problem. In fact, their debt-to-income ratio back in 2008 was an unbelievable 240%. So the size of their problem was even larger than the size of our problem when you look at it per capita and proportion. So a huge problem. Well, then obviously you need to make sure the banks are afloat, right? Otherwise, uh, they can't take the action that they need to take. Uh, here's what people of Iceland decided instead. No, we're coming for it. And not only did they have protests, but they were starting to throw rocks at the parliament building and saying, we're not going to take this crap. So instead, this is the route that they went. They indicted their uh, former prime minister, uh, Geir Harde, who of course I have no idea how to actually pronounce his name. Sorry for all the mispronunciations. And then they decided, well, that's not enough. So let's go ahead and uh, arrest the former chief executives of the three biggest banks. So there they go. And over 200 criminal charges uh, for the bankers. Now wait, we were told here in the United States, well, you can't do that. Oh, these are the bankers. You can't do that. You'll destroy their economy. In fact, not only did they do that, but the former CEO of one of their top banks, Landsbacki Islands, uh, got stints in solitary confinement. They Bradley Manning. We Bradley Manning people who are actually trying to expose what the government is doing wrong, they do it for people who actually destroy their economy. Who's more logical? Well, let's find out. So, uh, what was the result of all this? Well, uh, this is interesting. Um, they decided to, it, to give actual relief to the homeowners. So what they did was they forgave debt exceeding 110% of home value. So if you're underwater and it was above 110%, they just forgave the, that portion of the debt. Now here in the US, that makes people in power's head. It's, how could you these irresponsible people? Who, the bankers who crashed the economy? No, 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 I love those guys. No, the homeowners who got tricked by the bankers into taking these loans with exploding interest rates. No, we can never forgive them! But wait, Iceland did it, so we'll see how that turns out. And then uh, they had a loss equivalent uh, to 18% of the gross domestic product, the banks did. Again, we were told about that. 13% of GDP for the banks, what can you do? They don't do it, don't do it! And the debt was relieved for more than a quarter of the population. Again, here they would say, no way, that's actually helping real citizens. That would be a death knell for the economy. Okay, interesting. So how did it turn out? Oh, damn it. Look at this. In 2009, their economy tanked. Uh, it shrank by 6.7%. So uh, I, 
I guess they were right, right? Iceland's economy uh, goes down in 2009 to 6.7, down 6.7%. So they were right. Wait, oh, 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 wait, I'm getting further numbers here. What am I hearing? Oh, it turns out that in the ensuing years, in 2010, it went up 2.9%. And then in 2011, it went up 2.4%. In fact, it is now doing much better than the European Union. And it's even doing better than the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Those are all the developed countries. So they're beating the rest of the world. But wait, I, I thought that if we went after the bankers that our economy would never improve. That we would be in desolate condition and we would be in a depression that we couldn't possibly recover from. It turns out that if you actually help your citizens and jail the bankers, it actually helps your economy greatly. Now, Iceland doesn't even want to join the European Union anymore. They're like, why would we join those losers? Those guys are still trying to prop up their, their banks, their bank executives. They're still funneling money to all those guys and doing austerity for their citizens. Cutting from their citizens and giving to the bankers. That is a proven failure of a strategy. It didn't work in Europe. It hasn't worked in the United States of America. The one place where they did what at the time, Paul Krugman said, I said, Simon Johnson said, so many other the, of top economists said, hey, why don't we nationalize the banks? Why don't we give relief to actual citizens instead of the top banking executives that caused the collapse? Well, they tried it in Iceland, and it worked. It worked better than almost anywhere else in the world. Finally, Fitch ratings, which gives them, uh, you know, of course, the ratings based on you know, how well they're doing, how stable they are, etc. Had to conclude at the end, quote, the unorthodox crisis policy response has succeeded. It was so unorthodox to actually give the advantage to the citizens rather than the bankers, but shockingly enough, it has succeeded. There is another way of doing it. Iceland did it, it worked. It would also work here in the United States. But since our politicians are corrupt and captured by those top banking and multinational corporation executives, we will not do that. Because our politicians do not work for the population. They have no interest in helping the population. They work for the banking executives and all their other top donors. So don't let them lie to you and tell you, oh, no, we have to help the bankers. Otherwise, there's no way to help the economy. It is the exact opposite of the truth. If you actually went after the bankers, you would help their job. And if you had if you needed any more reason to hate Tim Guyton, well, this will do it for you. I am Hörður Torvason. I come from Iceland. I am a person who belongs to no political parties nor religious ones. And uh, I'm the person who started like kind of a, uh, well, a revolution in Iceland on the 6th of October 2008 and I kept it running with three demands for five months that is to say we we got away the government we got a new government and uh, people in high places that had been very corrupt we are all dealing with the same problem worldwide. This is a globalization of few companies and IMF. We are fighting for our lives. We have a choice. Either we accept these conditions or we fight it. We don't fight it with riots. We don't fight it with fire. We don't fight it with, with violence. To deal with the non-violence part, what I did in Iceland, and they started throwing rocks at the police. But the people wearing orange walked in front and made a wall in front of the police to show we mean this. This was a very beautiful thing to do because people were throwing rocks. And, and I think in, in that part we won the heart of the police. We fight it with reasons, informations. We have the technology, we have the brains to do it, so let's do it. And every, each and every one of us has a part in it. To the Greek people, you have an option. Give up or fight, but fight with your brains. This is about our lives and the future 
of the children, of the generations, of the young people today. I mean, what's their future as it is? To the Greek politicians, listen to your people. You are working for the people, not for your private situation. Greek people, all over the world, people are following what you are doing. We are aware of it. And we send our love and we say to you, we are fighting with you. And give strong messages to the politicians to do their jobs. When they are aware of you, they think, ah, these are my votes, so I better do something for them. Make them aware of this. We are people all around the globe doing this. So join us. We are with you in our hearts and in our minds. Good luck. Thank you.